Well, hey there, everyone. It's Barry's Best Honey once again. I'm Mike. And I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana on a beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. Good Friday. Well, folks, that's right. The Easter weekend is upon us. And it is the 29th of March. So I'm on my way into town and got kind of a, a special video a little bit out of the norm but it's still going to involve bees because i'm going to open some bees and what we're going to be doing is and i say we because i have somebody coming we're going to be looking at some problem hives you might have noticed i have not been videoing a lot in the yard in town since we uh checked those little colonies out there and i think we may have went through a couple but not much in the end it's uh it's a problem yard right now I think I got an outbreak out there of BFB. So, more bad news maybe you might say, cause you know, the queen video and all, but ah, eh, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I just left them alone to be honest with you. I left them alone until I could get some answers and figure something out. Uh, and I got one at home that appears to have it, you know. Uh, that's not unusual to have one out of 40 or 50 colonies now and again that might have it. Uh, and if it's a mild case, they, they they come right back out of it with a good purging of nectar and, and, a, and a healthy queen. The one at home, she was a very old queen. Um, she was rolling into her, probably going into her at least third year, if not fourth year. I can't remember. But these in town seem, and, and look, I don't know if it was all the rain. I don't know what it was. Uh, but these in town, I started going through some. You know we had that nuke that was out there that was bad. Well, I'm not so sure. They didn't get robbed. That's for sure. That's They're still there, and there's no honey missing. But something spread. Maybe some drift. Uh, I don't know. What I know is I went out and started looking through the colonies and found two out of ten that were good colonies. I split one queen off, isolated her, and so everybody else i'd go through and the brood was spotty and i'd find a lot of that brown curled up brood and that's that's a bad thing so <clears throat> i called somebody that i noticed was on a live one time and he is our uh was our apiary inspector for the state of louisiana he's retired since his name is alan and one day i'm doing a live out walking in my yard i don't know about a year ago year and a half and he pops up in the chat. And I'm like, wow, the, old, the uh, retired bee inspector is watching my videos. Wow, okay, cool. So anyway, he offered to come over and take a look. He wants to verify that we don't have any AFB because there is a stench, but it's not a stench like he and others describe, not at all. Uh, but it is something unique to those colonies, which I believe it now to be European fowl brood. Um, I, I just do all the pictures, show it, everything looks it, and you know, Outside of teramycin, requeening is all that would maybe even save them, but I don't even know if that will at this point. Now, I went back out just to get an idea at the beginning of this week and checked, and my one stand has got considerably marked improvement. I'm seeing uh, good colonies, good laying patterns, uh, no bad larvae, so that's telling me that that stand over there is coming through it. Um, maybe, and they do get a flow down here a little quicker than we do. So, I'm thinking that's what we're seeing. The other stand though, still bad. I had hives that were, colonies that were really strong and they're not. They're just not strong anymore. Um, and, and they're going downhill and they've got the signs. Not as much. Now, they are improved a little bit, but not by much at all. So, I'm really concerned. I just stayed out of them out there. I can work the one stand just fine. They appear to be healthy now. So that one stand in the front is just not doing well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go take a look, maybe get some information from him, let you meet him, and um, see these see these colonies and what we're seeing. So here we are at the scene of the outbreak, if that's what it is. I don't like to speak that over my bees. Hopefully they, they come right out of this, but uh, we're going to find out. But we're here. And it's mainly this stand that's the problem. When you when you walk up, they're flying, they're doing well, but they should be, you know, I don't know, there's a couple of busy hives, but these should be blowing up. Uh, you see that little nuke? I need to shake it out, but I don't want to until I find out what's going on. 
The second one with the blue box, that thing was super strong. It's weak. The one on the far right is now a queenless uh, laying worker hive. I gotta shake it out again. Don't wanna do any shaking out yet. Wanna get some advice. Uh, the single down there, that's a split. It's also struggling now. And the one next to it that's a single with a super, it is, it was a booming hive as long as uh, a colony with the one next to it. And now, so basically that one and that one, those two, man, they were exploding uh, at the end of last year. So not good, not good. But I see pollen coming in. They're trying to uh, bring in some nutrient and we'll see what happens. So things may be looking kind of rough because here these are two videos in a row where I have problems, but it's not as bad as it sounds. The queen situation is what it is. I do have some new cells that are looking good and looking healthy. Um, of course, the first ones did, but I think they're going to be fine. But I truly suspect uh, a nutrient issue, and it may be me relying on the natural pollen, which, you know, that sounds crazy, but there are certain pollens that aren't as, you know, robust as others, especially in the early parts of the season when it's really early so i don't know maybe that's it because a lot of that bee bread was from maybe real early maybe it was older i don't know um but we're coming out of that queens are going to be fine hives are going to be fine we get what we get we don't pitch a fit And then there's this situation that's just right here. So everything else is going along as well as can be expected. And we're just going to hope for the best and keep keeping bees. That's what we do. Um, we just adapt. We overcome. And uh, we keep moving forward. It's agriculture. Um, crazy things happen. We overcome. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, so we've made it out here. Alan has made it. This is Alan. Alan was our... State, what do what they call you? An apiarist? Or that's State the apiarist. Guy? Okay, you're the apiarist. What's the other guy that's the scientist or whatever he is there, the entomologist now? Oh. What do they call him? Uh, who are you talking about? I don't even know who he is. Well, they have a state uh, entomologist. Entomologist, that's what he is, the state now, entomologist. Yeah, now he's the assistant commissioner, but that's just, that's a title that comes with that job. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so the state apiarist is the one who, who basically runs the apiary program. Well, there you go. Inspections and whatever else. And that's what you used to do. Yes. But now you're retired. That's right. Enjoying life and raising bees. Oh, wow. Uh, tremendous. I do want to ask you one question. We'll get to it at the end of the video. Okay. Let's look in this colony because okay. I don't want to hold him up long. He's been running all over the state uh, helping people out. <laughs> he still runs all over the state. Uh, this one, I, and I don't even know what to do about these little weak ones that have it because with them having it. And the thing with this colony is... This was a super strong colony. I watched it just dwindle. Feeding and everything like that? Yeah. And all that? Yeah. And they just... This is a... Mm. They got like a real unique odor to I them. do smell that smell. We're going to find out. All right. So I'll tell you what we'll do. I don't even know. If... And they're, they're very... You can tell they're stressed. Uh... What smells like dying brood is what it smells like. To right. Me. So that's what I'm thinking it is. Now get this other frame out here. And so the ones that have a marked improvement, uh, they tend to not smell anymore. So right. You know, like it's definitely dying brood. Yeah, they're runny and flighty and all that. That's just how they are. So this is. This is yeah, there's a little see bit this in right there. You see that? Yeah. You see that? Let's take a look. Well, I can see that larva in there is kind of has sunk to the bottom, not quite um, decomposed yet. So let's see. And this one is, see that one's getting there. Mm-hmm. See what this one looks like. That one's still all right. This one doesn't look good. Nope. We're gonna see. It's pretty sticky. It 
doesn't it seems like it's a little bit thicker than um than European. Yeah. All right, let's see. But definitely looks like some type of brood disease for sure. I see that one already dried up. Here's some more right here. Show me them cats that you're spotting. Okay, just I'll show them to you. What, sometimes you don't know if it's an emerging bee or not, but right. usually this is a perfect example okay. right here. If you look at them, I get I'm trying to find some. Well, these are sunken in. Sunken in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but and I can see I'm looking at that little bitty hole right there, and there's mm -hmm. one starting right there. Here's another one it's starting that I can see. And usually what happens is their tongue sticks to the side of the cell. Right. And uh, I definitely knew they say here's another one right there. Right. Let's look at uh, let's look at one more. All right. Let's see what we see. Not the most ropey stuff, but I don't know if it's uh, too far. If it's too far along, yeah, they might have dried up a good bit. Right. You definitely, I mean, you did recognize that it is something we're going to put that little test kit in a minute. I think we'll get some off of that. There's another frame with more. Yeah, yeah let's on. look let's at try it. That one. I mean, is there an actual queen in here now? Yeah, it yeah. should be somewhere. I, ain't, I hadn't seen her in a while. Yeah, this one's got a lot more brood on it. Fine. So. See, I see that. They turned it over. These are a little bit better, but yeah, see now that the one over there, whatever it had, it it's improved. There's no brown brood anymore. All the caps look good. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Well, let's. You want to you want to do this one, or you want to look at another? One? It doesn't matter. They're all the same as this, okay. right there in this row, right here. Let's, let's take this one and see if we can get some out of here. All right. So let's look at this little dude right here. I've used these before. So basically, you take a stick. They have one in here. That's what I do right here, and you stir it up, and then you um, put, take the larva and, and you shake it up for what they say 20 seconds, mm -hmm. and then you drop it into this. Okay. This is it right here. Okay. Yep. That's like a yep little. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Definitely has that smell. That uh, here's a good one right here. Yeah, have you seen it a lot back in the day? Yeah, in the early 90s, there was tons of it in Louisiana. Wow. Um, we ended up burning a lot of bees, and uh, but most beekeepers they gonna burn them anyway. They weren't right. They don't want that. They weren't bad, you know. Um, so they. Um, Now, this has positive when you get a hold of Baton Rouge. Obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> Quick and in a hurry. But they usually, we always told people, you can do it yourself or we'll come and do it. Right, but he'd want to know about it. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal because you yeah. don't hear about it much anymore. No, you don't. I think what it is, I think the bees that people are raising are so hygienic that... Um, that, they, that you just don't find it that much anymore. Right. Um, like I said, I had some European fowl brood 
a couple of years ago, but it was. Now, what Jeff Harris was saying the other night, he said there's a way to take American Fowl Brew, take this out, and put it in milk. And he says it's the only thing, the spores are the only thing that will make milk clear. Really? Yeah. And that's how you can test he it? He said they used to do it years and years ago, because you know, he was an entomologist. I mean, yeah. uh, before an entomologist, he was a beekeeper. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, that's yeah. why I love that dude, yeah. man. Yeah. Where did he come speak? He goes to uh, uh, Meadville, their club, pretty often. And anytime they go up there, Kenny Smith invites me up there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. But that's in Mississippi. Yeah. In Mississippi, yeah, over over uh, other side of Brookhaven, like I want to say uh, west of Brookhaven. All right, get you get your top and we'll shake it for count to twenty. And... sure what it says about how many drops okay there you go I said two drops da, da, da. remove test device to get unscrew it down. hold device two to three drops on the sample weld the device good helps I'll take the top off there you go let's just mix it up a little bit more Okay, there it goes. Hold it to, keep the device horizontal until extract is absorbed. About 30 seconds and a blue dye appears in the viewing window. Okay, that's what we're waiting on then, a blue dye. Just wait until the control line appears and read there the it results. Is. Look at there. That's interesting. And eventually it'll, one of them, it's going, one is it's going to make a darker one. So it'd probably be good to always have one or two of these around. And right, at least yeah. an EFB Always one. try to keep a couple at the state. Because, I mean, the only other way is you have to count them under a microscope and count the spores. Right. Okay, I see one line. It might be, it might be, yeah, it might be European, let's see. That's what it looked like. It was a one or two. Two positive, no, it would have already shown up, so it's negative for... American fowl brood. Well, that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. We had a talk on it from Dr. Harris the other night about it, and it is awful. Yeah. European, I mean, European's better. You can change out the queens or you can get right. some uh, antibiotics. Um, but yeah, can you, I'm assuming you can see that on the camera. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm hoping the camera um, can pick it up. Yeah. So what, will, what would it have been a positive test? Well, positive, they would have had a line by the T. Okay. See right here. So we would have had a T. Yep. And I don't and know a, what... I guess and a C. Yeah. Yeah, you would have had two for... Right. It would have been, yeah. So you would have had one earlier. So we're... Yeah, we're... We're, we're on the negative good right deal. here. From okay. it, which that is good. I think it... I definitely think it's a foul brood. I think it's European. Um, so I think antibiotics and some new queens should clear it up. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, well that's I mean, good hey, news. Hey. I don't know if these bees are supposed to be mean or not, but No, you should see you know. look, there they go. There you go. See, my bees aren't horrible bees. <laughs> <laughs> he had me worried, folks. There you go. I'll turn off the camera before it gets stung. So here we are. So Alan showed me this trick when he's done inspecting. He puts the hive tools inside the smoker. And uh and that's how you, you clean them spores off if you did have it. Right. You heat them up. Because going hive to hive for sure. Right. Well, that you know. was going to be one of my questions when I kind of asked you about that was, what do you do? You're out there looking for disease as the inspector. Now you're going somewhere else. You got to keep your stuff clean. Well, yeah, we would do it. We'd alcohol in this. Okay, alcohol. See, right. that's what I've been using when I get home yeah. is mainly putting alcohol in anything I touch. Right. All right, so. So that's what we try to do. Try to do. And I mean, in your gloves, I mean, you're going to get something. I mean, all you can do is wash them, but I mean, look at these gloves. Right, man. right. I don't know what's going to penetrate that. Right. You try to do the best you could do. You know? Well, you made a statement the other day. This is what I wanted to say. You made a statement while you're puffing that smoker uh, to me on the phone, and you said, being an inspector doesn't necessarily make you a good beekeeper. Oh, that's Ex a fact. Explain yes. that to me. Explain what you well, mean by that. There's so much more skill coming, uh, I guess, to become a good beekeeper than there is to becoming a good bee inspector. Because a bee inspector, I mean, you do have to, the only disease in Louisiana that's really regulated is American fowl brood. Right. So once you learn how to do that and you can pick up on that, you know, you can go through the hives and kind of 
look pretty quickly and see if they're well or right. not. But that doesn't teach you how to feed your bees, how to make the splits, how to raise queens, uh -huh. and how to do the timing all the way through spring to where they don't swarm on you and stuff. Right, so right. to me, it was a much harder transition. I mean, even though I've kept bees since 2000, it's still, you know, until you can keep a beehive alive for 365 days a year, yeah. you know, you really ain't hitting on much. There you go. You know, so. Uh, well, good deal. Yeah, much harder. Well, I do appreciate you coming out here all the way across from where you were at this morning. He was out setting a nuke for somebody and coming and checking my bees for me and, and taking yeah. a look. And I'm glad we found uh, found what's probably EFB and not AFB. Right. So, and, and, and the best treatment, everybody always says, you hear them always say about a good flow, and I guess it does clean them out if you got mild cases here right. and there as March gets out of the rains and you get the good flow shore. But when you have a situation, what we looked at is in every one of these colonies, except this one's a lane worker now, because mm -hmm. it died out. Teramycin or an antibiotic actually is, is right. really the best bet with requeening. And I think you, you you said you had some of the symptoms, I think, before the end of the year last yeah, year. Yeah. So, you know, we've already been sitting for a couple of months. Right. I think in, with the spring flow, because I know they've had some flows going right. on a little bit, and I think the privet should be hitting pretty soon. I don't think that's going to clear it up. No. I, mean, I think, I think we're too late. Some, yeah, and antibiotics. Into it, yeah. So yeah. I got I got a line on some, and, and we're going to get it on them. But, well, it'll be uh, interesting to see. Put that on there, see what's going on. Yeah. And let's check it out and see what it's We'll it do it, for sure. A couple of, couple of months. You know? All right, well, I sure appreciate it, man. Oh, man, that's the least of my, least of my, you know, least I can do for my fellow beekeepers. Well, everyone, that is it. I really enjoyed meeting Alan in person. Um, we've texted back and forth. Uh, we both have a, uh, a common passion for the Quetico Provincial Park up in Canada, so we talked about that for a little while. Um, and, uh, of course, we talked bees, and we talked bee business, and we talked all that good stuff. And it was uh, it was cool to talk to him and get a perspective from somebody that's um, retired. Because <laughs> boy, I tell you, it keeps me thinking. Anyway, it was a great visit. I am so pleased we didn't see AFB because when he first started looking, he immediately could smell uh, dead decaying larvae, and that's the smell I've been smelling. And as the hives over there cleared up, um, I didn't smell it anymore. So that was kind of a clue. It may not be AFB, but then when he started looking. And opening them up he started seeing some ropey sticky larvae and that kind of got me concerned so i'm so happy that he had the afb kit here with him if he'd had the efb kit uh granted that probably would have showed us but i'm so glad to be able to rule out afb and see improvement we went into the colony next to it um and we didn't uh, we seen it clearing up still some of it but i noticed better and he immediately saw that the bees were acting better uh, and they weren't acting the same so um, man that was a great visit and I learned a lot from him and uh, as far as uh, how he's keeping bees and some of his outlooks on bees and how he does things and I learned a lot from him through that inspection of what he would be looking for as a an apiary inspector so uh, man that was great because here in Louisiana we just we don't have a bunch of apiary inspectors to come out and do a lot of visits um, it really needs to be a problem that you have to go call him for. Um, and he doesn't know it, but he helped me years ago when my poisoning happened. We had a kill off in my yard. Um, we're pretty sure it was malicious. Can't prove it. But anyway, he sent the state pesticide folks to me. So um, he doesn't know it, but he dealt with me years back. It was good to meet him. It was good to have the experience out here and him to go through and show me. And you know what? My bees behaved really well. We were uh, able to go barehanded, no problem, and uh, they weren't all over us, and they, they really will. But the weather's nice. It's a gorgeous day. It's probably in the 70s right now. Low 70s, sunshiny, blue skies, just beautiful. So, All right, guys, well, look, I'm going to let y'all go. Appreciate y'all coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, enlightening to you. It sure was to me. And I'm going to go ahead and get on back to the house. I got to work some bees back there. So this is Barry's Best Hunting. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a great weekend. And may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.